So if you're a beginner, I suggest that you start with a, um, a piece of uh, odd cloth, just stretch it, or some people like just to lay it on um, the uh, surface, but I prefer to work off a frame. Um, but get a piece of odd cloth and actually just practice and get used to the temperature of the wax and get used to how the wax goes down with each of your instruments. So that now is pretty good in terms of the quality, I've got a wobbly hand, um, quality of the heat on the wax. It's coming through beautifully, it's not blobbing. The little blob there which suggests to me that it's just kind of um, cooling down a little bit. But as you see, nice, steady and regular movement. It's almost like spray painting, you want to keep it going. Um, then that, there's, that's where the wax ran out. Um, you stick your kiska back in to the hot wax just to let the actual metal heat up. Um, the wax is obviously a hot that's in there already. And then pick it up again. Uh, and you can try them all out, I'm just showing you one. I can then go back if I want to and continue that line. Uh, and what you do is you just double rub over where you were before because two bits of wax heating each other, one of them cools instantly. So you actually need to melt both layers and, and merge them together. So there we go, and I'm gonna come round. So now I'm gonna show you just, once you're happy doing that, do some squiggles, get used to that. Then you can give your janting a quick try because that will be slightly different in the way you use it just because it's a different type of delivery. Again, find your speed. Keep to that regular speed. The minute you want to take it off the cloth, pop it back onto the cloth and back into the pot, and that will prevent drips. You also need to, especially with the jantings, just give them, as you bring them over on your cloth, give the underside and the underbelly a quick rub, otherwise you'll get drips off of that. Last thing to try, literally, very simple. Make a circle, and you just start in the middle and move outwards and outwards. And they never have to be perfect, that's you know part of the fun. But you can get a pretty good circle quite easily if you're just steady, straight back on the cotton, and you're gone. So, James, it's over to you. I'll go for chanting first, then. Okay. So you've got to keep, keep the top level, don't keep trying to keep the chanting um, level because obviously you've got uh, fluid in, in the top of it and you don't want it to tip out. Don't go too quickly, also if you're going to go backwards and forwards because it'll slop out the top. So it's always very light and very um, very slowly. As slowly, you can be faster if the wax is slightly hotter. You slow down if it's slightly cooler. Um, and yeah, get just that's perfect. Getting used to just, there we go. That was good. So put it back into the, into the thing, to, into the pot to reheat. Breathe. <laughs> So, because it's, it is often, it is that feeling of, you know, committing to something and there's no going back. Um, try a circle or something. You see that, feel there's a difference? See, it's mad because the size of line. It's probably the wax is a little hot. The figure, because it's you can see it's quite fat. Yeah. It is, it's now a little hot, so I'm just gonna move it over off the really heat onto the side heat. Um, and as you see as it's cooling down the line's getting thinner and thinner. So you can see that this is too hot. Okay. Uh, that's about right. So put it back in the heat, you keep having to put it back in the heat. Um, cool. You're not having something to rest your hand on. You've got to yeah. keep your hand up. Have, although you can lean on your elbows to do it. Sure. Uh, I often do that, otherwise I get, that's why I get a bad back. So, but, so I lean on my elbows a lot more now. I can try and keep my back straight. It's always scary the first time. <laughs> <laughs>
So I should yeah. actually should be waxing over the pencil line, should I really? It doesn't, it, you should try and go to the outside of the pencil line because it's the white, but that's, exactly. it's fine, it's, you know, it won't really show. In fact, it won't show at all. So very briefly, um, I'm going to show James how to mix up um, one of the dyes and he's going to do the others. We've got our chemical water, that's just soda, ash and water, warm water mixed together and left to, left to cool. Um, I keep some of the dyes that I get from Procyon that come through in little sachets, put them in spice jars because uh, they keep them uh, sealed and it saves on recycling them. Um, and obviously you can build up as many as you like and I keep them in a in a spice shelf almost. So I'm going to just very sh quickly show you how you do the lemon yellow. I'm only doing an absolute tiny bit of this. So literally, there you go, enough. Don't need any more than that for what I'm about to do because I'm just going to make this is just going to be a slight ring and a slight start to the yellow before you get into the lovely warm colours. Uh, it'll just add a little bit of zing. So you then just add a tiny bit of water and you need to mix it. Some of them take longer to mix than others. The lavender is a nightmare. You have to make that, let that mix for ages because the pinks mix at a different rate to the blues. Um, but there you go, that should be nicely mixed. You then test that on the side of the cloth to make sure that it's the right consistency. It's not too, too, too thin and therefore making too light a yellow and you're away. So James is now going to take over and do the rest.
So we've just had, James and I just had a quick discussion and I'm just going to go through what we've agreed on. Um, both of us think we agree it's a little bit too pink right now. All these dyes will go darker, but I still think it's, we still think it's a little bit, um, a little bit too pink, especially around the edges. But the main thing that we've been talking about is actually here, uh, I call, kind of call that a dye hole. Um, as in, um, the dye has been, has been, the sponge has been moved too much and it's become lighter than, than what it should be next to this bright, um, the cold yellow followed by the warmer yellow. So what we've agreed to do is I'm, we're going to mix up a few of the dyes that we did yesterday, plus one darker one, which is going to be very much more of a red and probably slightly dark red, um, maybe a sort of wine colour. Um, and we're going to try and fix this. Um, and the way to fix it is that, first off, we're actually going to protect what we do like here because the last thing we want to do is a big blob of the dark dye going right in the middle of that and killing the whole boutique. So we're going to just do a very rough protective wax over the centre a bit and then we're going to work with the sponge and some brushes to then try and make this area um, blend a little bit better um, and create some more um, sort of more ready colours rather than pinks as we go further sort of around almost framing it. We will keep some of the pink and these wonderful blends that have gone on. It's just at the moment a little bit too pink than, than what we would like it to be. So now that we've had a little discussion and James has waxed in his son, um, we are going to put another dye on and this time we're going to be a lot braver. If you're going to re-dye it, hey, you know, why not? So we've mixed up some extra, extra strong dye colours. Um, three of them are yet, uh, oranges, the, the lightest, uh, more diluted, least less diluted and the strongest yellow, uh, sorry, orange. We've got the warm yellow there just a little bit to help to blend them through and we've got what is a dark uh, wine red, but again, it comes across quite magenta, so that's gonna be really there just as a little bit of a blend at the end. Mainly what we wanna do is use the oranges to make what is at the moment quite pink into something which is just much more of a warmer orange color. So the orange one will overpower because it's stronger the pinks that are here, but the pinks that are there will contribute to the variations and the warmth of the colour that it eventually goes. So they work in unison, but because these are going to be much stronger, it will take out quite a lot of the obvious pink. So one good thing, a good trick to learn is when you mix up your dye, try it on the side of the cloth. When you're happy with the dye colours that you have, stick them next to each other at the top of at the top of the thing outside of your top of the cloth outside of your picture and then actually put your dye pots in order so that sometimes it can be quite difficult to, to work out if that one is what is that is and what that is um, but by having this reference here you know that's a yellow and that's a light orange and it's a really good tip so you don't get confused so the uh, the biggest battle I guess you're going to have doing a, a second dye before you uh, wax is that you don't want the two separate dyes to look very separate if they're all going to be covered by the same same wax at the same time. So blending what's already here with what now we put on is one of the key things. The best way of doing blending is with water. If you, you want to take the whole of the batik and very, very lightly damp it. It releases some of the fibres, it gets them available for dyeing, and it enables the, the, the dyes to walk, walk, move around on the surface a lot more, blend before they actually set, which gives a wonderful soft feel. If you don't put the, the, the water on first, you will start to get um, definite lines. This is where perhaps it was a little bit too dry. Um, you get lines like this. You don't really want that. You want these wonderful blends that's going on here and that's where I know there was water, a lot of water there that helped that just to do its, its stuff as it was settling. <laughs> 